Welcome back to Couch Collectibles. Hope you guys are having an awesome day as always. Today we are looking at some rare coins that sold for five figures. So we're going to start with some older coins and get into some more modern coins in today's video. So if you guys are new, feel free to check out all the other coin and collectible videos here on the channel. Let's just hop right into it. All right, so starting off first here with the 1909 was supposed to be a 1909 Indian head cent. So an Indian head penny here that was actually struck onto a 1906 Barber dime. Now, if you guys don't know what a Barber dime is, here's an example of an 1898 silver Barber dime. So this coin was already created and this Indian head scent design was struck onto that coin. As you can see in the images displayed, you see the design of the Barber dime as well as the Indian head scent. So because of that, that will make the coin super, super rare and that's why this coin sold for over $37,000. Let me know in the comments below what would you do with $37,000. All right, so here we go, 1916 D mint mark. Now this is a super, super rare mercury dime. Now there's a lot of common mercury dimes out there that you know, in you know, worn down condition, aren't really worth uh, too much more than the silver value itself. But in this case, this is the 1916 with the D mint mark. As we look here on the back of the coin, we zoom in there, you'll see that D mint mark. That's what you wanna look for on your 1916 dimes. If it has the D mint mark, it's going to be super rare because they only produced 264,000 of these coins. Now for a coin like this, the rarity is in the mintage. They didn't make or produce a lot of these coins. So they're going to be very, very valuable. Even in bad condition, if you have a genuine 1916D, it could still sell for a lot of money. Now this is in very, very good condition and it's graded by PCGS at a Mint State 67 with full bands. So that will make it super, super rare, even though it's already super rare in terms of how many they made of these coins. Now this coin sold for over $96,000. Keep in mind the coin grading scale goes up to 70, 70 being the best. This is at a 67, which is very good for a coin like this, of course, as well. And uh, it has full bands. So if you're not familiar with full bands, uh, definitely watch my other Mercury Dime videos. We go into more in depth on that, uh, so feel free to check those out. Let's move on to a 1922 high relief peace dollar coin. So this silver dollar coin was actually featured on the Pawn Stars episode uh, at the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop in Las Vegas. As you can see, it says on air collection uh, graded by NGC and it's the matte. It's the matte proof. So there's only like five to 10 known of these examples where they're like the sandblast proof uh, examples of these 1922 high relief peace dollars. And one thing that you'll notice on these is here on the obverse, if we look at the nine of the coin, where the date is, the nine, you'll see the points of the bust very like overlays it. You know, it overlays the date, the nine and the date. So this coin did sell for $99,000, nearly a six figure coin. So wow, that is just amazing. Now here is a 1945 S mint mark Walking Liberty silver half dollar coin. Now you know there's a lot of 1945 uh, silver half dollars out there that are going to be in pretty common, you know, in circulated condition. Some of them are, uh, you know, not really worth too much more again than their silver value. Uh, but in this case, this is super rare because it's not only in pretty good condition, it was actually struck on an El Salvador 25 centavo planchet. So always weigh your coins. If something looks wrong, uh, definitely get those inspected or graded. And this coin did sell for over $15,000. $15,000. Here is a 1958 Washington quarter. Of course, these are going to be 90% silver quarters. Any quarter from 1964 and prior are going to be 90% silver. So keep those, they'll always have silver value. There's other things you can look for and that's why I got tons of other quarter videos here on the channel. It shows, shows you guys what to look for. But this here is an error coin. So we see here on the front of the coin looks very normal like any old Washington quarter. But here on the reverse, we do not have the reverse design. You see the obverse design 
sign backwards. It's like mirrored, right? So it's a full first strike brockage of the obverse on the reverse of the coin. That's going to make it super valuable. That's why the coin sold for over $12,000. Now here is a 1965 Roosevelt dime. This is very important. Way, way, way your coins. Now this looks like a regular 1965 dime, right? However, this coin was struck on a silver 10 cent planchet. So in 1964, they stopped producing these coins in 90% silver. 1965, they are not supposed to be silver at all. However, this coin was actually struck on a silver planchet. The planchet is the piece of metal that the coin design is struck onto. Once the design is struck onto the planchet, then it becomes a coin, right? So this coin here sold for over $9,000. There's a lot of different ways to tell if your coin is silver or not. You can either weigh it, you can uh, look at the edges. I've done a whole silver coin video on that, how to tell if your coin is silver, feel free to check that out. Uh, but there's multiple ways. All right, so let's move on here to this 1969 S Lincoln cent. Now this penny is going to be super, super rare. Even, uh, you know, in bad condition, these are going to sell for a lot of money. This is graded at an AU 58. So obviously it spent some time out in circulation. It got passed up uh, and used and someone found it and got it graded and the coin sold for over $18,000 and it's because it has that double die obverse. This is a super rare double die. Uh, so look for doubling there on the lettering, the word liberty, the phrase in God we trust, as well as the date 1969 itself. So always be on the lookout for that. I do have coin microscripts available on couchcollectibles.com. That way you can see your coins up close. Now here is a 1974 S mint mark Lincoln cent. This penny here has a reverse brockage. So we'll see here on one side, it just looks like it's a regular worn down penny. But here on the reverse side, you'll see that the obverse design is there backwards. So we do not have a reverse design. And this coin sold for over $11,000. Here's another Lincoln cent from 1982. I get a lot of questions about this coin, even though I've already made 1982 and 1983 penny videos explaining this further in depth. But for today's sake and for the sake of time, we'll go through this fairly quickly. What you want to look for is a 1982 small date. The small date will curve in the middle. The two will curve in the middle. The large date just goes straight down. So there's an example of a large date versus a small date. But you want to look for the 1982 small date with the D mint mark that weighs 3.1 grams. That was struck on a bronze planchet. These are super, super rare. That's why the coin sold for over $10,000, even at an AU58 grade. Uh, these are going to be super valuable if you find one. Now, there are small dates out there uh, that are not rare. You want to look for the 1982 small date D mint mark that weighs 3.1 grams. So keep that in mind, $10,000. Here's a 2000 Jefferson nickel with the P mint mark. It was struck onto a 1978 Lincoln cent, uh, which is very interesting. Here on the reverse, you can actually see the design of the penny. Uh, so that's pretty cool. This coin here sold for over $12,000. Can't beat that. Here's a 2007 presidential dollar coin, the George Washington presidential dollar coin. This coin was struck onto a five cent coin, so a Jefferson nickel coin. Uh, really cool. Obviously, here's what the coin is supposed to look like, the George Washington presidential dollar. But this is what the result is when it was struck on a Jefferson nickel. And as a result of that mint error, this coin sold for over $17,000. Woo, 17,000. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe in the middle. Check out the videos to the left of me. And until tomorrow, I'll see you all in the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles, and this is where I disappear.